to explain the uh, mechanism of labour, it's first important to understand the diameters of the bony pelvis. Uh, the first diameter is the pelvic inlet or the pelvic brim, which is the circle formed by uh, the superior border of the pubic symphysis, uh, the iliopectineal line, also called the arcuate line, the lumbosacral junction, and the iliopectineal line on the left. Uh, the mid cavity is circular. The pelvic outlet it is the theoretical diamond formed by the inferior border of the pubic symphysis, the uh, ischial spines and the coccyx posteriorly. Uh, the diameters of the fetal head are also important to consider. Uh, the, the bones of the fetal head are not yet fused and the anterior and posterior fontanelle are necessary to allow uh, compression, also called, called moulding, during labour. The smallest diameter of the fetal head uh, is in the transverse and in the fle flexed fetal head in the transverse, uh, the largest diameter which must pass through each of the uh, parts of the cavity is the biparietal diameter. Uh, which is demonstrated here. Uh, the fetal shoulders are largest in the... No, it doesn't matter, but yeah. just keep going. The, 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 the longest diameter of the fetal head is anteroposteriorly, however the longest diameter of the shoulders is in the transverse, and this is why a mechanism of labour is necessary. At term, the fetus is in the mother's uterus within the abdomen. From 36 weeks in primipara and often right up until term and the start of labour in multipara, the foetus begins to descend. Engagement is the point at which the foetal head descends into the pelvic brim or the pelvic inlet. At the same time of this there is also flexion. The, the foetal head flexes towards so that the baby, the foetus has its chin on its chest. Um, this is driven by the uterine contractions, uh, the shape of the bony pelvis and also the shape of the pelvic floor. Then there is internal rotation. The fetal head rotates so that the occiput is under the maternal pubic symphysis. Uh, this is caused by the muscles of the pelvic floor. If the head is deflexed at this point, the fetal head will not rotate to OA but will rotate instead to OP. This is because the, I've got the name of the muscles, but we're going to do both later, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, causes uh, whatever hits the pelvic floor first to rotate anteriorly like this. The shoulders partially rotate as they have to pass through the pelvis later. Delivery of the fetal head is by extension. At this point, crowning will occur. Crowning is not a bony term, it's the term for the widest part of the fetal head passing through the soft tissues of the mother's perineum. This is caused by the continued uterine contractions and the shape of the bone pelvis. Following this, the head restitutes. This is the only part of labour that is driven by the fetus. The fetal head rotates so that it is in line with the fetal shoulders. Following this, there is external rotation. External refers to the fetal head, which is external to the mother's pelvis at this point, but the shoulders, which are still internal, also rotate into the anterior posterior diameter. This allows the anterior shoulders to be delivered from under the mother's symphysis by downwards traction and the posterior shoulders to be delivered by upwards traction.